love the reveal on him too, but not sure they should have gone with that exact same shot for when he left too. I think that would have been better to downplay a little bit. I don't know, maybe it was to underscore the epicness of him being in an action movie again, even if he didn't hold a gun or do anything or fire off any good one-liners. Not sure why Willis couldn't have been in it more. I mean, he isn't doing a lot these days, is he? And as we saw in Sin City and the newest Die Hard movie, he can still pull off the action star bit. I don't really have a problem with Terry Crews, but it is a little irksome that that could have been fucking Wesley Snipes. <clears throat> Dude, from now on, pay your fucking taxes. We want to see you in movies. If they do get him for the second one or whatever. And there's again a guy who uses a ton of knives. They should totally have a blade reference. Something like, ah, I don't play with knives or something. Don't you just love how satisfied they are with what they've done as they're flying away from the island again that first time? That'll send a message. Yeah, like... We didn't fucking understand what our assignment was. Come on, guys, you were sent there to kill one man. You did nothing of the sort. What the fuck? It also did kind of feel awkwardly like, you know, just stringing out to make sure that it's a full movie, at least passing 90 minutes. I mean, the way they didn't just go straight there and blow the fucking shit out of everybody. I mean, that's what they wound up doing. The army wasn't smaller by the end of the movie. Early on, they talked about, oh, it's a suicide mission, we can't just go in there like that. Then they do, and everything works out. You know, because they're all one-man armies. And they have that special Hollywood lead star in an action flick immunity, where every bullet must go at an angle when approaching them so that it doesn't hit them, you know? think wanted. When the action gets really big, it honestly gets a bit disorienting and too chaotic. You really can't tell who's hitting who or shooting at who. What exactly was it that made them the Expendables? You know, other than the tattoos that they had to flash every other second in the first half hour, and the matching motorcycles. I mean, they don't even work for any governments anymore. You know, they're mercenaries. They're not cannon fodder soldiers. Also, I think to be expendable, you have to be able to be expended, you know, you have to fucking be able to die, and none of these people are capable of that. Even Dolph Lundgren, who's like halfway sort of expendable, but no longer because he's now working for the other guys, he was shot a little bit above the heart. And yes, I get that he could survive that. And I'm not claiming that I had figured out that he'd return by the end of the film. I hope it means he'll be in a sequel, because he kicks... How easy was it for them to find out that Bruce Willis was, you know, working for the CIA? Wasn't the point that they shouldn't be able to know that? No. You've done enough. You've killed hundreds of my countrymen. You've blown up our government building. No, thanks, Sly. You've, you've done enough. Seriously, with allies like this, who needs enemies? Isn't it lucky how in that big shootout with that huge pile of C4 right next to them, I think that was C4, apparently none of it got hit, you know, none of it blew up with them there. Okay, Sly, go ahead and blow up the building. She's out. I mean, she's just barely out, and the fireball of this huge explosion might almost hit her, but still, she's out. Go ahead and blow it up. Is it just me, or was it a little awkward how Rourke really didn't change his hair since Iron Man 2? I don't know, it just, it was weird how the two characters looked so much alike. I mean, the costume and those really ridiculous sunglasses that he wore in Iron Man 2, those were really the only differences in the look. Does anybody else love how Willis fucking dominates the screen about all of the time after Arnie's left that scene? I mean, that speech about don't fuck me over, or I will come get you. We've heard that a million times in, you know, the two or three decades where these movies were huge. But it fucking worked. His delivery, spot on. And I'm not surprised that he could deliver something like that well, but it was just awesome. 
And am I the only one that realized how much taller Schwarzenegger is than Stallone in that one scene? I mean, I didn't really think of Stallone as a short man. I don't know, maybe he's really tall, I don't know. I think they did a good job of finding some really cool weapons too. I already mentioned the automatic shotgun, I like the automatic handguns. The six shooter was really cool, nice callback to spaghetti westerns. Honestly, the assault rifle that Stallone used a bunch didn't really do much for me. One of the funny moments that did work was when Statham gets saved by Sly shooting and he's like, you could have hit me! And Sly just replies, you're welcome! I do think that they kind of ruined it by then going on to have both of them do the thing. You know, it was kind of, okay, we already had the punchline, move on. I heard that Van Damme passed on this one. I hope he gets to be in the next one, because he is one of those big 80s action stars. Plus, if they have him on screen with Dolph Lundgren, they can do a callback. I mean, in my opinion, Universal Soldier is one of the most entertaining films that either of them did. It's one of the films where Van Damme's utter lack of actually sort of works because, you know, he's not supposed to be hugely emotional. And Lundgren is just pure badass in that movie. Those were my thoughts on The Expendables. I hope you enjoyed it.